How's it going guys? Bobby here and welcome back to Wedding Cinema University. Now just yesterday Canon announced the Canon C200 camera and tons of people are saying that this is finally the point where they have woken up and are ready to compete again. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on whether or not you think that's the case. And in this video, I want to talk about all the specs that we know about this camera and then my thoughts on whether or not I think this is a step in the right direction for Canon. So like I said, this camera was just announced and one of the most groundbreaking uh, specs on this camera is that it can shoot 4K raw video. Now this is not the first camera to ever do that, but at the price point and coming from the Canon line, it is a major upgrade, something that people have definitely been waiting for. And it's certainly a show of good faith that Canon is listening and perhaps is ready to compete a little bit more. Now it is going to be recording this RAW 4K video in a new format called Cinema RAW Lite. And it's going to record that to CF 2.0 cards. However, if you want to shoot on SD cards instead, or perhaps you don't need the RAW 4K video, although if that's the case, this might not be the camera for you, you can still shoot 4K, 2K, and Full HD at different megabits per second uh, to SD cards as well. Also along those same lines, it can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, so you'll get that nice 4K high frame rate footage in order to slow it down if you'd like to in post. And it can also shoot, again, 2K video, as well as in full HD 1080p video, it can go up to 120 frames a second for even slower slow motion shots. With this new 4K Cinema Raw light format, they are announcing it as having 15 stops of dynamic range, which is absolutely huge. The main draw to Raw, of course, is that it gives you a ton of room for grading and basically all post work done to it. Uh, 15 stops of dynamic range is huge. Um, and also in the other formats, I believe they said it would be 13 stops of dynamic range. Now the C200 is going to have dual pixel autofocus system in it, which is in some other Canon cameras as well, and is very well respected as being a great autofocus solution. It will have ND filters in there, and it has also been announced, at least by Canon, that it will have great low light capabilities, which I fully expect to be the case. This is all going to be packaged in a body that is ergonomically similar to the C100, although a little bit heavier. Also, for those that care, it is not a full frame sensor. Just like the C100, it is a super 35 millimeter sensor. Not a big deal by any means, but certainly something to be aware of before you make an investment of this size. Last but not least, of course, is the price. Now, it is currently available for pre-order on B&H and some other websites. Uh, at $7,500 when it comes with the side handle and the top grip as well. However, you can buy a body only version for $5,999. And there's also, I believe, a kit that comes with the 24 to 105 lens as well. So now that I've gone over all of the big features, although there are certainly some others, it's time to share my opinion on whether or not I think this is a step in the right direction for Canon. Now, ultimately, I would say that it is I think, like I said, it does show that they are maybe waking up a little bit. They are maybe ready to compete. But at the same time, this line of cameras is not really in the same range as what a lot of wedding videographers are using. So that's my biggest gripe is that while it is a step in the right direction for Canon, it's not going to have the impact that I think many people are thinking it might have on the wedding industry. I think the reality is that most people are not going to spend $7,500 on a camera, albeit a very good camera, when you can buy a Sony a7S II, a Panasonic GH5, or quite frankly, even a Canon 5D Mark IV for a much lower price, even half or less. Now, this isn't to say it's a bad camera. It packs a ton of awesome specs, including the RAW K4 video, which is huge, at a pretty reasonable price point for that. However, I don't think it's for the wedding industry. I don't doubt that some people will pick it up and I don't doubt that they will create amazing work with it, especially if you're looking for something that you can really push the boundaries in as far as your color grade or post, then maybe this is the camera for you. Ultimately though, I think this is not gonna have as big an impact on the wedding film industry unless you do a variety of things. So if you're doing a lot of commercial work as well, 
then this might be a wise investment. It could be great for you. If you're doing just wedding videos though, I think that there are other places to spend your money better. So those are my thoughts as well as the specs on the C200. Thanks for stopping by. I would love to hear your comments below on what you think about this new camera. And as always, I'd love for you to like and subscribe. Follow along as we release more videos to help you build your skill set and your business. Thanks.